in the morning. This is the last interview and the last segment of the day. And uh, we're going to talk about matters entrepreneurship, but specifically we're going to shine the light on financing SMEs or SME financing. How do they go about it when it comes to maybe uh, seeking for funds, funding, it's literally a conversation about money. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. And also financial literacy. How do you actually become empowered financially? Are there maybe lessons that you need to have about when it comes to you know handling money? And how's the cash flow? <laughs> How does money flow from one source to another, especially now from a banker's perspective? And I'm joining us live in studio. We have uh, Collins Wanyonyi. He's the head of Enterprise Bank at Stanbeck Bank. He's also had an opportunity to work with uh, traders or let's say business owners or SME owners at Dubois and Gikomba Market and he'll definitely be telling us a brief history about himself, how he went from you know working at the bank. He's still working there by the way at the bank and now working with uh, SMEs uh, right here in Nairobi, Kenya, generally Kenya, right? Uh, good morning to you Collins. Good morning and thanks for having me here. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Good. Yeah, so just tell us a little bit of uh, a, a short story about yourself. Like, how do you got into the banking sector to a point uh, behind the scenes? You mentioned you've been there for 16 years. That's uh, almost now two decades now. And uh, now the passion for you to work with the youth, uh, specifically now, especially those in the SME sector. Uh, joining banking was interesting. So one of my friends, I went to school at Day State University. Uh -huh. And uh, when we, gra we graduated, uh, after studying Bachelor of Commerce, Business Administration and Accounting, right. uh, we visited one of my friends, and the dad used to work for a bank. Okay. And uh, he mentioned, mentioned that uh, one of the things they used to do then is they used to be invited by banks before they graduate. Okay. So the talk was, those days, tamaking was literally printing your many CVs and walk door to door and pass your CVs to banks. Uh, apparently, Stanbeck was one of the banks I passed my CV to, and I got a regret letter the same day of delivering uh, the, the, the letter. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started off in a, in a local bank, one of the tier one banks. Right. Served there for four and a half years before joining Stanbeck. So I'll focus on my life at Stanbeck. I started off as a corporate relationship manager, serving, uh, serving corporate customers. Okay. I then switched to business banking, and in business banking I've worn a number of hats. So I took care of uh, what we call international development groups, which are technically not-for-profit organizations, including diplomatic missions, churches, and schools. Then shifted to SME banking. I served SME banking for four years, then moved to public sector banking. Public sector is mostly working with government on the banking side. Right. And now this is my second stint uh, running enterprise banking, which is typically SME banking for Stanbic. This right. is my second year again. So it's like cumulatively, as you call it 16, I'll probably round it off to almost 18 years in banking. Right. Yeah. That's two decades. Yes. Fully. <laughs> now, uh, uh, still on that note, you know, having all those years of experience, maybe are there things that maybe you pinpointed, especially when it comes to now uh, money? Because, you know, when you work at a bank, <laughs> now, also there's so many misconceptions that, you know, anyone who works at a bank, they have money 24-7. But you will tell us that later on. Now, are there things that you noticed, especially when it comes to now uh, SMEs? Uh, mm -hmm. It comes also creating opportunities for the young people, especially in our country. And even right now, when the economy is like on a nose dive, are there maybe things you point, you notice and you said, you know, I need to actually get fully masked in this sector so that we see how we can help young people. So SME runs the country. So they say about 80% of employment in Kenya is provided by SMEs. Right. So basically then the SME is the engine that drives the country. So when you are when you're supporting SMEs, you're literally supporting the country. Yeah. And if you also look at the the youth population, which happens to be the highest population, then most of them will fit into SME. So for me, the passion around serving SME is to then see how do we grow this country. So if you look at Stanbic, our mantra is Kenya is our home, we right. drive her growth. Right. And for, for us to drive this growth, we must support SMEs adequately. When it right. talks about money, I okay. think there are two ways of looking at money. Right. One is uh, what facilitates our daily life because even in business, it's the yeah. exchange of money that keeps the business going. Right. So how you look at that money becomes the critical piece of your success. Right. Yeah. Are there characteristics of money <laughs> as we get deeper into it that, you know, from a banker's perspective that we need to know like, yes, 
if you have to handle money well, not mm. just even handle, yeah. keep it, multiply it, use it. Because of course we've mentioned about cash flow. So it's like mm. a chain. It goes from one source to another, a user, a withdrawer, a depositor, and the rest. You know? Are there characteristics that are fixed? I think characteristics of money, I'll go back to my business education days. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they say money is a store of, of wealth, is a measure of value. Right. and is a bill of exchange. So uh -huh. I think those will be the three main characteristics of money right. that I'll think I'll want to put across. Right. Yeah. And you need it. Like, whether you're, you like it or not, you, mu you must need money. Yes. And you must have it. Is it a must? <laughs> is it a must? You must have money for you to, to live and survive? I'll say no, because uh -huh. there, there's still butter exchange. Uh -huh. yeah? right. So that you don't have to have cash exchange for every goods and service. Uh -huh. So it's not a must for you to have money. money. You can trade off uh, uh, services. Like a tangible good with another tangible yes. good. Yes. But gold of course is, that has gold value. Gold is an exchange, yeah. <laughs> right. Of yeah. course a good that has value. See to Kijikona, you know, something else. Right? That's true. Yeah. All right. Now let's get uh, deeper into now the SME sector. Uh, for a person who doesn't know, it means a small and medium. Uh, it, it could even now medium, or micro and small medium enterprises. For a person who doesn't understand what they are, uh, briefly you can describe it to them so that they get a glimpse of what we are talking about before we get now to the financing part. I'll use the government structure of defining an SME. So the government classifies SMEs into three, micro, small, and medium. Right. And it's based on two, two characteristics. One is turnover and two, the number of employees. Right. So this, the micro is, uh, has a, um, about one to five employees. That's a micro. And then pushing turnover. And turnover here, talking about sales of right. about below 10 million. Mm -hmm. And then from 10 million to about uh, 50 million and up to about 100 employees, that will be treated as a medium. And mm -hmm. then above 100 million and above 1,000 employees, then that's right. taken as a, as a, as a medium right. enterprise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it again goes back to the number of, of people in, 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 the, in, the, in each category. Yes. Number of employees mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, their turnover. And there are situations where it, it overlaps. So right. for example, if you look at a cleaning company, right. yeah, a cleaning company, it might be having a very low turnover, but it's having large number of employees. So that is the times when it becomes a little bit confusing. Yeah, because right. a little a cleaning company, if you're coming to clean the premises here, you won't clean with one people. It might be 10, 20 people. Right. So automatically you, you move from being a small right. To a, to, a, to a micro, to a small, right, purely because of the number small. of employees you're pushing. Uh -huh. yeah. which, ones, which ones are the common in our country? I'll say medium. Medium is common. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then if you go back to, you said no statistics, but if you go back to look at statistics, registered companies in Kenya, looking at uh, Kenya Bureau of Statistics uh, for 2016, gave us uh, registered companies at about 1.6 million, okay. but unregistered at 5 million. Right. So then using those statistics, then I'll say the micro, which are mostly the unregistered are more, and mm -hmm. then the mediums, which are mostly the registered, are less, right. probably 20%. Okay. Yeah. Are there like rules and regulations that uh, manage the operations of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. So in various industries, there are rules and regulations that govern those. Uh -huh. and, um, and also if you look at the market trends, there's, there's, a, there's a way the, the markets tend to govern how the various trends, are, the mm -hmm. various businesses are managed. Yeah. yeah. In, in our country, is it possible maybe to just touch on, on a few, especially the ones that you had a chance and an experience mm -hmm. to work with? Like, how is the structure of the operations? Especially now we mentioned uh, the Du Bois and the Gikomba mm -hmm. ones. So... We have different classes of, of, of licenses that uh, businessmen get. Right. So we have the county governments, if I use that structure, right. that gives you a trader's license that runs for 24 months. So the list is, I think the cheapest list cost is about 3,000 and running up. But then there are also those traders who are given daily tickets. So you go to the market and they're given a daily ticket for just exposing your wares on the market. Right. So that is about... Uh, 20 shillings to maybe 50 shillings a day. Mm -hmm. So those so the, those will be the two categories that I look at. And then the other flip of the categories we also look at, then those who have trading licenses, 
uh, for bigger, they have a fixed premises. So they have a fixed, fixed location where yeah. you'll go and get them. Whereas these ones, the daily tickets are mobile. So in Nairobi, we call them hawkers. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but, but then also when you look at it from a, a point of now like an individual level when it comes to even accessing uh, the finances. Uh, for example, now at Stan Big Bank, uh, if for example a person is watching the conversation right now and they want to get information on how they can access uh, financing or funding for them, yeah. uh, is there maybe a criterion or a process if you can possibly take us through of how they can get to acquire funding or finances from yeah. let's say a bank perspective now from Stan Big to be specific? And thanks for bringing Stanbic into the conversation. Maybe it will be good for me to tell who the viewers who Stanbic is. Yeah, sure. Stanbic yeah. is a Stanbic is a bank uh, mm -hmm. locally, and we pride ourselves as being the supply chain bank for customers. Okay. And supply chain because we want to provide support from the lowest level to the highest level of any supply chain. And supply chain means if I use um, a dairy uh, as an example, right. the lowest will be the farmer. Mm -hmm. And the largest will be the milk producer that you go mention any milk company. So, yeah. so those ones. So that is how we look at supporting that value chain. There'll mm -hmm. be the transporter. There'll be the farmer. There'll be the aggravate. So we want to be the bank that supports that. So how have we done that? We want to look at three levels of engagement. Uh -huh. We we want to give these entrepreneurs access to banking services. Right. It could be loans. It could be a transactional account. It right. could be insurance. So that mm -hmm. is one leg lever leverage that we do. The yeah. second leverage is access to information. Right. Um, one of the items that SMEs are struggling with is knowledge and information around what they do right. and uh, just the market trends. So recently, I don't know whether you follow us on our social media, we took the market, we have the monthly report on PMI, mm -hmm. which gives the, tr the purchase power trend in the country. Mm -hmm. And the last item is access to markets. Right. Access to markets enables the, the SME to sell their products. Right. And we've even gone to, uh, to an extent that we've created, enable, we've enabled SMEs to grow. So, for example, we have the Stanbic Business Club, okay. where we are getting our customers to interact with each other right. and sell to each other. But we also have an international platform, we call it Trade Club, uh -huh. where we allow interna any SME that is playing in the international market to access the market through our Stanbic Stanbic uh, Bank, yeah. Stanbic Bank uh, Trade Club portal. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means again, it's giving them information, it's empowering them, and then also making them even have opportunities. Exactly. Right. Maybe are there like, uh, let's say, qualifications for an SME to maybe qualify for that level of, let's say, like you said, uh, Stanbic Business for and loan. Yep. Right. So to join the club, provided in business. Uh -huh. And you're not lim you don't, it's not a must for you to be a standby customer, in as much as we encourage you to be a standby customer. Right. But for us to extend money to, to you, there are minimums. We'd like to see your business, at least you must have been in business for at least one year. Why mm -hmm. one year? Because we want to see your full cycle. What mm -hmm. was your highs and what was your lows? Because yeah. we base it on your story. Basically performance. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once you've been in business for at least one year, you're good to go. Right. We'll then use the information that you have right. to, to check your ability to, to access money. Right. And whether you, if you can't access money, one of the things that we've done in partnership with the Stanbic Foundation right. is, and some, some uh, financial partners, is right. to provide what we call catalytic fund. And catalytic fund, you're giving uh, SMEs a minimum of 10,000 shillings to a maximum of 100,000 shillings for mm -hmm. startups. And for uh, this is for startups mainly. Yeah, just for startups because mm -hmm. they have no financial background. They have no uh, even documentation. It, it, yes, it, it, they don't have anything. But what we then do is right. we take we take them through a one month uh, financial literacy training. Mm -hmm. And after we've taken them through the financial literacy training and they've taken them through the main the five pillars of a business, then able to give them this what we call a catalytic fund. You know, a catalyst. You remember the high school yeah. chemistry. Mm -hmm. It's something that triggers it's you. triggers performance. Yes. You know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we start from ten thousand to hundred thousand, mm -hmm. and this is based on what you've built up as a story during right. the, the financial uh, fitness mm -hmm. training that we're doing. So all you need to do is just have a good story about a business that's operational. Have a plan. A plan, exactly. Just have a plan. You know, you can have, uh, you can, somebody told me you can have 100 million, but when you don't have a plan on how to structure it, you could end up with even 50 bob <laughs> within a month. <laughs> and somebody enhanced and said, yeah. have a plan that is written. A written plan. Yes. 
Why is it important, by the way, to have a business plan on that note? When you want to leave to go to town, mm -hmm. you'll tell yourself, I'll leave my house, I'll walk to the bus stage, I'll take my tattoo number X, I will drop at point Y. Right. So having that plan becomes very clear because it shows you the path you're taking as you run the business. Right. It will also factor for you how much it takes. So, for example, from where you stay to town, it right. takes 30 minutes. But you know, if it's rush hour, it takes one hour. So you plan yourself around that time. So the, the goodness of having a plan, it helps you create a mindset of where you're going. Uh, Steve Covey say, always begin with the end in mind. Right. Yeah, so you get to know where you're going and then you build up as, as you head towards the end. Right, true, yeah. perfect. I love it. Now, uh, for example, now for a Gikomba, let's, let's imagine uh, a trader right now who is at a, in a Gikomba market, yeah. which you interact with a lot. And when I was at Upalin in Ikidoka Kidoga, and then on Mishona Pesa, how can they go about you know, uh, seeking financial support from you know, your organization? If you could paint for them a picture right now. So, the, the picture that they, I'll walk them through one is, um, by the way, we are a very digital bank, eh? so right. they can open their accounts digitally. They don't have to walk to the branch to open uh -huh. their account. So we have a website that they just click on that website, they can open their account. But I think the step of faith is we have a branch in Gikomba. They will walk to our branch. We have our business advisors within the branch and they'll walk them through their business uh, plan. So what happens is the business advisor will sit with them to understand how they run their business who runs their business because when you run your business on your own and when you are an em you employed people to run their business the management styles are different right. so once we get once we get uh, the background of the business we then need to understand what is the purpose for the money why do you need this money for and then we we run back the purpose for the money with the story you gave earlier if it adds up then voila you have the money right yeah and it takes about two days to access this money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Accessibility. if successful. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and also now uh, loans. Now, when it comes to loan issuance, uh, it's 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 a it's a great conversation. But then I understand uh, it must uh, operate also within the presence of elig eligibility. eligibility. Now, I can't just wake up and say I want to go to Stanbic Bank and I need yeah. a loan. Now, for business, from a business perspective, and now SME, uh, what are some of the things that you guys consider for you to give a loan to an SME? The, the analogy I like using is if you can't ride, ride a bicycle, I can give you a bicycle, right? Right. So one, as I mentioned earlier, we need to have seen you for operate your business for at least one year. Mm -hmm. And that, that one year gives us the history of the highs and the lows, like the times you've made the most money and the times you've made the least money, so that I come yeah. to, to get your average, right. how much you average sells in terms of volume and right. what is the pricing that you sell. Based mm -hmm. on that information, I'll then see how much more money do I need to give you so that you grow gradually. Right. Because we avoid you having a high leap because when there's that high leap, you tend to, you tend to lose focus. One of the things we've seen is when you give people so much money, they right. move money from the business to go and buy a... <laughs> Things that are not even <laughs> yeah. within the business. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's why we, we try to have gradual growth. Uh -huh. And we have loans that run for six months. We have loans that start for three months. And we have loans that run until uh, 36 months. Right. So depending on what you're investing in, depends right. on then how much money you give. And by the way, we give up to 5 million shillings on unsecured basis. If it's on a straight purchase, uh, mm -hmm. straight stock fun financing. But if you're on a value chain, for example, you remember I said you want to be a value chain bank. Right. If you're in a value chain, we can give you up to 40 million on an unsecured basis. For example, in a community like working between Blue Band, uh, what is the other, Brookside, yeah. uh, such a setup, you're able to get such a huge amount yes. as well? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You can be able to get such. So the best example I'll give is for, for, for our customers who run the petrol stations, which we, mm -hmm. we call them dealership. Right. So if, for example, you're operating under an OLA, uh, fuel Ola station, energy. and and I'm saying this because there's an there's a YouTube uh, video of how Stanbic and all have worked to support their distributors. Mm -hmm. If you check it on YouTube, you'll see that. Okay. So what we do is then we just take the sales records from Ola of how that distributor has been operating, mm -hmm. and on the basis of those sales records, we can give that distributor the petrol station up to 10 million on unsecured basis. Mm -hmm. And remember, here we're not asking him to bring us audited financials and bank statements. We're right. just saying. Let's show us 
Ola give us the statements for this petrol station and yeah. on the basis of those statements we are able to give them access to about 10 million shillings right. that is how simple right we do some of these transactions ah. yeah does credit credit score really matter a lot when it comes to also the operation and also seeking for finances for yes sms yes uh -huh. credit score matters so uh -huh. the crb law was brought in uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. so there's um i know most kenyans don't take crb score seriously but right. for us as banks we take it seriously mm -hmm. so we 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 look at if you've been listed for a non-performing facility we tend to shy away from you but we also want to understand what is this that you're listed for at mm -hmm. times uh, you go to the extent of finding out uh, for example yes. uh, uh, uh SMA somewhere somebody got sh uh, listed for defaulting like 20k you definitely pinpoint and get to it and get even the reason as to why they were You see, when, when, when you come in for and make a loan application to us, we'll then go and run your CRB report. Then oh, we realize uh -huh. that you are, you are listed by Safaricom, for example. Mm -hmm. So then I'll, I'll ask you, right. you, you are listed for Safaricom for 3,000 shillings. For Lisa. What happened? Mm -hmm. So one of the common examples I've gotten is you, you, you took a line for your brother ah. who had just come from school at that time he didn't have an id so you registered a line for him with, then oh he was right. operating with that line and uh -huh. guess what he took a full visa and since he didn't worry about it he didn't pay for it mm -hmm. so what it's affecting the, your credit it's affecting your credit score so mm -hmm. uh, depending on how that was positioned so i'll engage you and say okay please visit safaricom clear their loan let mm -hmm. them give you a letter of clearance and then come and discuss right. so there are some that you can enter into a conversation and discuss and understand and say yes okay. this is a logical uh, story let's support this person oh you can but talk you, you can talk yourself out of it yeah you can uh -huh. yeah i'll not say talk yourself out because when you say talk yourself out it's like kuna <laughs> kaujanja <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's about understanding the background behind the listing uh-huh yes. the sole reason yes it's, uh -huh. it's good to just it's uh, it's good to wear the human face and understand the reason behind the listing yeah. and then if it's something that is addressable is something that can be redeemed right. then ask that person please make good of this payment get clearance right. then let me see your transactions for the next one month and then we pay but remember by the time we're walking this journey it, it means the only reason you're not qualifying for the loan mm -hmm. is because you've been listed right so that is probably out of a check of five items. This is the one of, a, one of the item that the only item that is locking you out of engagement. Right. Yeah. To, uh, let's say to what big amount or least amount can a, uh, an SME or a person get <laughs> uh, listed in CRB? And it can, it can cost them when it comes to also accessing a loan. From you can be listed for 500 shillings. Only 500 bob. <laughs> yeah, the law is clear. If you have not paid any money, you'll right. be listed. So if, even if you borrow 100 shillings, uh -huh. you will be listed. Oh my God, there's no mercy out here. <laughs> it's, it's the law. The CRB, the law. Uh, mm -hmm. apparently the CRB yeah, must, is, you know, law. Kama ibada, law. Kama sharia. Exactly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's, it's not easy. But also uh, financial literacy is, is very important. I love the fact that you know, you're offering uh, that full course to all uh, your, uh, especially your clients that come to you. And we've done for about 150,000 uh -huh. so far. Just in Kenya, I'm in yes, Nairobi. Just in, in Kenya, Kenya, of course. Kenya. I know uh -huh. most of them is in Nairobi. Uh -huh. Yeah, but just in Kenya, we've done a total about 150,000. Right. Yeah. Now, since you mentioned it in Kenya, before we get back to now defaulting, is it possible to extend this conversation out to people who live in the rural areas? Because, you know, like we say, most of the people who are privy to the conversation you're having right now on TV are basically people who have a know-how of how to work in Gikomba, you know, having to work in Maasai market or toy market and the rest of the market. How can we make this conversation move to a places like in Bumula, you know, the interiors of Western and, 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 and such other places, so that they get to have this information we're talking about. As we speak today, I have my colleagues from the foundation who are in Elgeo, Marakwet, right. who are doing a health awareness uh, cancer preventive session, and also they are also doing a financial fitness training for women. Financial in fitness Mar training. Yes. You'll explain that. Yeah, uh, in Elgeo, Marakwet, as we speak uh -huh. today. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the interiors now. Yeah, in Elgo Marakwet and uh, at large the county. I, mm -hmm. I think it's within the county headquarters okay. uh, of Elgo Marakwet. I, I don't know the, the exact, but it's within. Uh, so you're running a cancer screening session for mm -hmm. women and also for 
for everybody. The cancer screening session is for everybody. So because you're doing prostate, uh, cervical, and uh, breast, so that is done as a preventive. That is just part of our way of keeping the community healthy. But then for the women, we are having the Financial Fitness Academy. Financial fitness is to train the people around the four cycles of money. Right. If, I use, if I use a family setup as a right. four cycle of, four money, cycle of money, so mm -hmm. there's one cycle being you just being fresh from campus. Right. You've just left. Your, your needs for money are different. Then right. the second level is you've just had a, a young family, wife, two children. Your needs for fam family will be a bit different. Then move to a next level where your children are now in campus, in college. Your discussion on money is, di is different. And the final leg is your kids are done with school, all left, now you left you and your wife alone in the house. Mm -hmm. So the, the journey that we talk about in the financial fitness is to position the money, money discussion in those four stages of life. Okay. We also then reflect that in the four stages of a business. Uh -huh. So there's the personal financial fitness and mm -hmm. then there's the business, business financial fitness. But the philosophy around the financial fitness is those four items. And the fourth item on this, when you're discussing the last item, is legacy. Right. What the story you are you living uh -huh. post you? For your kids, for your kids, for yourself, the business. So for the business. Basically the belief that we have yeah. is the business is not, the business should not die with you. So mm -hmm. you, you, you've had discussion around first generation, second, second generation, generation, third generation. Like uh, managers well, for the it's business going in a chain. So, it's a chain, yeah. An extension. And, and uh -huh. uh, the Asian, the Asian community have done very well, and to the extent that you have great grandchildren mm -hmm. running the business, Still running the business that was there 50 years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of. So You're the financial fitness that, academy, yeah. we try to paint that success story of how do you run this business mm -hmm. to the to the third, fourth fifth generation right yeah really excellent so it's full circle training yes it is right uh the shortest period that it runs is two and a half hours right. the longest period can be about a week mm -hmm. when we just have to build each aspect so if you have the short session yeah. two and a half hours done yeah. the long session is then all those four pillars are taken one pillar a day right. that takes about five days now are they free yes we offer it free of charge okay yeah so what we've done is we offer it for groups uh organized groups specifically because it becomes easier to put them together and run that and um you'll be happy to know that we've only not just done for for businesses i think uh once i think before covid i did i was part of the facilitators who ran it for lady judges and magistrates uh -huh. and it was a full day session so right. we 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 ran it for there's, as I said, there's a component for SMEs and then right. there's a component for individuals. Right. So you as an SME, you can invite us to also train your staff right. towards the financial fitness. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, before we move to savings, uh, uh, I had mentioned about uh, defaulting. For example, now uh, an SME runs out of operation, Vitu Zimarabika, in short, mm -hmm. in <laughs> like right now. Yeah. Uh, if they default in paying back uh, or repayment, uh, what are the consequences? And then, like you said, is it possible to also discuss it from a human perspective? Yes, it's possible. So mm -hmm. I think the biggest mistake that SMEs do is um, when things start going bad, they start running away. Mm -hmm. I think that is the best time you need to meet your bank. What do you think triggers that? Even also for a person who has a loan mm -hmm. with a bank, uh, the moment an anini unangame me potea, me change line, is it, Not even is a it bank, of fear? even your friend. You know, yeah, time, sure. your, your friend asks you for 2,000 shillings. Exactly. Then uh, it tells you he'll pay you after a week. Mm -hmm. Then I'm a two weeks later, <laughs> he's calling you to ask you, are you going for, for this something. game? Right. And you can't pick his call because you think he wants to ask you about the money. Right. So it's, it's a human attitude. It's, it's fear, some yeah. sort of fear. So my encouragement it. to, to mm -hmm. businesses is the moment you start feeling like things are not right, don't wait until they're worse. You go down <laughs> the pool. Right. That is the time you need to go to your bank. Mm -hmm. Come to Stanbic, talk to us, tell us, I used to sell goods, I used to have sales worth 5 million every day, now my sales is 2 million every day. How right. do you walk this journey? Mm -hmm. So from the onset, the bank is able to give you what is called restructure your loan. Right. We adjust your repayments from the high number that it used to be to a lower number that can suit your business. Right it might require you to extend the tenor of the loan for some little longer, mm -hmm. but then it, it helps you pay the loan in good time. 
Right. It's easier to structure restructure a loan before it goes bad. Right. The moment it goes past 90 days, okay. rules and regulations <coughs> from the regulator, central bank, come into play. Because mm -hmm. the moment your arrears is past day 90, right. you are treated as a bad loan. Right. And the rules of how you treat a bad loan is not as favorable as when you're treating a loan that has just gone bad. Right. So my encouragement to SMEs is please talk to your bank. Right. Or Go to have a conversation. Early enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Now also uh, the lending rates, uh, are they, do they vary like from, let's say, SME to MSME? Do they vary also the size? Yes. Also the type of company and the structure as well? Uh, please talk about that. So at, at Stanbic, what we do is we call it risk-based pricing. Or risk-based pricing. So risk-based uh -huh. pricing, it means we look at each individual business on its own merit. Right. So one business might be deemed to be very risky. They'll have a higher interest rate. Mm -hmm. Another business might be deemed to be less risky. Mm -hmm. They'll have a lower interest. So mm -hmm. currently our least interest is about 14.5. Mm -hmm. And our highest interest is about 17%. Right. So depending on how we perceive you to be risky, then that is where you sit. And risk could just be some small items that, for example, how often do you actively use your bank account? Mm -hmm. And if you In terms of deposits, withdrawals, yes, savings? Yes, deposit and, deposit and withdrawal. You know, for mm. a business, I'm not even keen about your savings. Right. I'm just keen about deposits your active lot. transactions. Transactions. And yeah. not use bringing the same 100 shillings you brought yesterday into the bank today. Mm -hmm. Because we can be able to tell whether this person is just trying to to make the account look good right. and somebody who's doing good business. Because right. these days, apparently, on the bank statement, it shows the source of that money. Right. So if you send money f by M-Pesa from your own cell phone, it will show your name. Right. Yeah. And you can't be sending money from your own cell phone every day in the account. I'll be asking you, mm. where is this coming from? Right. Yeah. Really shocking, because <laughs> anyways, it's your money now. <laughs> Why the question? There's a time we had a, a conversation with my co-host, and uh, we were, I was trying to tell her that nowadays you can't withdraw like one million in a bank. Like you have to write a letter, you know, explaining to them why you have to withdraw millions. Like, wow, well, why then? <laughs> it's because why it's do a, I have to give you a reason why I'm withdrawing my own money, money. in my own account? It's yeah? a it's a government regulation, anti-money uh -huh. laundering law. How to curb that? Yeah, so uh -huh. it's a money laundering law that says any amount of a million shillings and above, and above. you must give put a even a source and oh, purpose. Oh, state the source? Source uh -huh. and purpose. And purpose for of it. Of that money. Oh. But maybe you could be, you want to buy a car or you're gifting a friend. <laughs> it's fine. Just say source. Uh -huh. Source is my salary. Purpose, mm -hmm. I'm gifting this friend. Um, somebody gifted you some money from states. <laughs> Direct your card. You're allowed to also mention their name. Like there's this story of this uh, lady with this uh, Belgian, uh, Belgian boyfriend. I live like 102 m. Kidogo kidogo. They uh, they flag the account. What usually happens? They usually flag the account or they that freeze money, it. That money will not hit the account. It can't even. It can't touch the. Account. At a two five bob <laughs> It will hang somewhere. Uh -huh. Until you provide relevant documents to support. Oh my god. It can't get to your account. Uh huh until you provide those documents. And if you don't provide those documents, that money will be returned will be to be sent back. Yeah. Why are banks this jealous? <laughs> it's, uh, so it's, it's not banks being jealous. It's uh -huh. just being, it's just being uh, alive to the regulations. Yeah. Take, true, take true, your true, time true. and Google. Some, yeah. some banks, uh, allow me not mention names. Sure. There are mm -hmm. banks that were fined find about a year ago, mm -hmm. about $10 million wow. for this money laundering issues mm -hmm. so uh, those is, transactions already happened the money was even like kick it like it will, will end up. google is your friend just google oh bank goodness. fines for mm -hmm. anti-money laundering so money You'll laundering see. is really it's a big deal a big deal indeed. yeah it's a yeah. big deal yeah all right Oh, crazy. <laughs> let's switch back to our topic. Uh, let's talk about now savings now for SMEs. Yeah. Uh, as, of course, you mentioned about you know financial literacy. Do you also encourage uh, uh, SME owners and uh, MSME owners to you know take on that journey of savings? Because when you talk about saving, I'm sure it's all about retaining and also multiplying. Are you able to retain the money and multiply it, or also invest as well? But are still, it's still in that cycle of mm. saving. Somebody mentioned saving and investing are two different things. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll give some background. So when, when you're saving, is you're just putting money aside so that you'll utilize it 
later for something else. Probably you have no clear plan around that money. Mm -hmm. You invest when you're investing is you're putting money aside and your critical interest is what return will you get from that money. So somebody who is investing, his main agenda is earning a return from that money. Somebody who's saving is putting money aside for an so you'll save for a holiday. Right. Yeah. So you'll save for a holiday. So if you're going to Mombasa in December, you start putting a thousand shillings this month, then by December you have twelve thousand shillings enough for you to to go for holiday. But when investing, you're not going to pull that money out of it. So the money will stay there. So yes, we encourage SMEs to, to both save and invest. Yeah. To save so that they're able to, to raise, to, to build up capital for a huge investment. So for example, if you're going to get an asset finance, we require you to deposit at least 20% of the cost of the asset. And uh -huh. then we finance the 80%. Uh -huh. So if you intend to go and buy a vehicle for your business, Okay. Then I'll encourage you to start saving portions of your sales mm -hmm. into a savings account so that you build the 20%. Like, for example, now at an individual best level, how much would you encourage? For now, like, let's use the example of buying a vehicle. From yeah. how much? Does it depend on, like, also if you're employed or you're also running a business? Does it depend on such factors? Employment, maybe a business owner or entrepreneur? Yes, such factors. Uh, so the, the, the comfort that comes around employment is employment income is cyclic. You can see, like in the bank statement, you can see the 15,000 has been coming every month. So it becomes right. very easy to tell. Mm -hmm. Collins earns 15,000 and that is the money that comes to his account mm -hmm. every month. Yeah. On a business side, it's not possible to do that because somebody has to do an analysis to see yeah. all this money that is coming in, what portion of it is mm -hmm. your profit and what portion of it yeah. is is um, is uh, part of the stock. So for example, if you, you sell bread, you buy the bread from the bakery company at 50 shillings, yeah. and you sell the bread at 70 shillings, yeah. then you deposit 70 shillings in the bank account. Yeah. How much is your money? Mm -hmm. 20 shillings. Mm -hmm. So, but when this person running a personal salary account deposits 15,000 shillings, mm -hmm. all that money is his. Right. So when you are assessing a personal customer, and assessing a business customer. So those are the things we look at. So for the business customer, I need to look at these 70 shillings you've deposited. Which portion of it is yours? Which portion of it is part of the stock right. that you've been selling? Right. Yeah. Also, I'd like you to talk about uh, the statutory deductions and how they have massively uh, affected uh, also SMEs and individuals. Mm. Uh, right now, I think we are talking of the, uh, is the financial bill a statutory deduction? Is it going, can it make it there? Tax is statutory deduction, so it can yeah, make it there. It can make it there. Uh -huh. So be, being, a, being a live discussion, uh, I only want to dwell into the, the politics side of right. it. Mm -hmm. But I just want to look at it from a business uh, side of it. Mm -hmm. So the, the small entrepreneur may, may suffer from, right. uh, from some of the tax components. Mm -hmm. And right. the only tax component I want to talk about here is the turnover tax. Right. So currently the government will be charging the, the small entrepreneur turnover tax of 3%. Mm -hmm. But my personal view, uh -huh. I, I think that needs to be reviewed because of okay. one thing. Uh -huh. I'll go back to my bread example. Right. When, when, these, when you're charging the, the SME 3% on 70 shillings, you're charging him 3% on both his profit of 20 mm -hmm. shillings mm -hmm. and is the stock, the, right. the stock itself of 50 shillings. So you're actually mm -hmm. taxing stock. You're not just taxing the income. But remember, tax is supposed to be income tax. Mm -hmm. So that, that for me is the only item that I'll say that the SME will stand exposed right. or when it comes to on the tax taxation regime that you're looking at currently. Right. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and that has reminded me also of, of tax waivers. Uh, 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 how, how does it happen uh, to a point, you know, yeah, a business is getting a tax waiver or an individual? Is it possible? To have yes, a it's tax possible. Waiver? It's possible for a business to get a tax waiver. Oh. I think uh, I'm I'll give the process in high level. So when you, when you want to get a tax waiver, you, the process is you need to, to formally write to the Kenya Revenue Authority and uh -huh. also to the PS for National Treasury. So I right. think the two institutions will then get into joint discussions and then they'll confirm, will give you an approval for whether you, you, you get a tax waiver or not. And when you have a tax waiver, uh -huh. then you're given a tax exemption certificate. 
Right. Yeah. And that will help you go down that road. Uh, yes. Tax incentives, that's another one that's popping. Uh, what exactly does it mean for a business and now as an individual person, incentives, tax incentives? Tax incentives are designed to enable a business to venture into, to promote a certain level of business. Uh -huh. So I'll give an example. I think uh, there's a tax intense incentive to manufacturing companies right. that are operating outside outside a big town. So right. if you are going to set up a factory in some rural place, you get a tax benefit purely by going to set up a factory there. Right. Same company, if it was putting up a factory in, in Nairobi, might be limited to corporate tax of 30%, but because they are going to set up a factory outside Nairobi, say in some rural location, so the, the KRA and the Minister for, uh, for National Treasury, the PS National Treasury might consider giving them a lower tax mm -hmm. as an incentive for them to set up the company there. All right. Yeah. Cool. I think that's clear. Um, also, I'd like you to talk about maybe what uh, the current government is trying to do to support uh, SMEs. Uh, I understand uh, the Hustlers Fund <laughs> is one of the main ones. Do you feel like it's helping? And now that they've rolled out another second phase of it uh, that now mm -hmm. can allow people to borrow up to, they say a million. Or yeah, they said a million. Right. I've is not seen statistics for Hustler Fund. Okay. So I might not be well positioned to talk about it. But there are two things that this government has done, uh, the government has done to support SMEs. So mm -hmm. the first one is a credit guarantee scheme through the National Treasury. Okay. So the, the National Treasury has designed a, what's called a credit guarantee scheme where they are working with a number of banks to uh, give access to credit to micro SMEs for purposes of growing their businesses. Right. So that is one aspect that uh, they've done very well. And then the other piece that the government is also doing well is um, um, in partnership with MSEA, micro, small and medium enterprise organization, they've, they've created uh, cohorts of uh, information centers where SMEs can go in and be able to, to get information on uh, specific areas of, 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 of their business interest. And then the last thing that the government has also done is in partnership with Kirdi, uh -huh. they're able to give small- Kirdi is an organization? Yeah, Kirdi is a government of organization. I'm not so sh sure of the abbreviations, okay. but they allow SMEs to go and do productions. So they have, they have equipment that you can be able to do several levels of production. Right. So they allow SMEs to go and make their productions from, from the equipment and all that. Right. So when I look at it, uh, from it from that angle, they've been able to provide SMEs with adequate um, platforms for growth. Right. Yeah. Uh, from future onwards, do you think uh, the environment is going to be conducive? Because <laughs> if, we, if we are facing another <coughs> you know, economic crisis and you know, it seems like there's no hope, do you feel like the future of SMEs is at stake? I don't think the future of SMEs is at stake. Mm -hmm. I might, be, I might look like I'm, I'm not quite optimistic. So I'll right. give an example. Uber is with us. Right. But does it mean there were no taxis before that? There were. We have Airbnb. Does it mean we didn't have accommodation before that? It's just about how do we align to the need that you're trying to solve for. Uh -huh. So as long as an SME, you identify a need and right. you're going to solve for it, then you'll, 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 you'll prosper. Right. So Uber came, yes, there were yellow tax, the yellow line taxis parked everywhere, mm -hmm. but Uber came to need, what was the need Uber came is, instead of me leaving my house, I can order for a taxi on my phone. Right. And the taxi comes to where I am. Previously, you had to walk to where the taxi is. It's yeah. the same taxi, by the way. But mm -hmm. just because you've enhanced the convenience of getting the taxi to you. And I think that is wha what... SMEs should look at. I think when I look at it that way, the world is available for the entire SME world. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, also, do you think that loopholes that need to be sealed uh, so that we cultivate, we have them deep rooted in our country? Maybe some of the loopholes that maybe also the government needs uh, to seal. Also, uh, from a Stanbic now perspective, that mm -hmm. you guys, we are pinpointing this and that so that you know we continue to nourish them. I, I think for me, the, the key item that needs to be seen is, is matters of trust. Mm -hmm. So what makes uh, lending expensive? Right. The, the item that makes lending expensive is this. I'll give, allow me to give a small yeah, please do. number. Yeah. Sure, so you have a thousand shillings. Mm -hmm. You want to lend out at 10%. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So that you make a profit of 100 shillings mm -hmm. to earn 100, 1,100. Right. Take that to be a bank. Uh -huh. So when you assume that four people will not pay the money, you see, the bank still has to make the 1,100. Right. So what they'll do is they'll distribute this 1,100 right. to the six people who will pay potentially. Right. So instead of the interest, the, the interest being 10 shillings, the interest has to increase to about 83 shillings. Mm -hmm. Purely because so, these four people I did not pay. Right. So I think if we're able to increase the level of trust where people can pay on time, mm -hmm. then the cost of borrowing will right. go much lower. Right. The second piece is commitments by companies. Right. So you have a 30 days credit line. Mm -hmm. Then somebody wants to pay you after 50 days, after 60 days. Remember when you've borrowed from the bank, you borrowed to pay in 30 days. The moment you start paying after the 30 days, penalty interest steps in. Penalty interest is slightly higher than normal interest rate. Right. So the mo when you delay making a payment to an SME mm -hmm. by 30 days, mm -hmm. you've increased their finance cost right. with a penalty interest for further 30 days. You're right. wiping away their profit. Also, in another version, also when a company, for example, delays to pay your salaries, <laughs> of course, there's this accumulated, you know, costs that you accrue. Yes. And all of a sudden, catch up with you. The moment you get back the salary, it's like you can't even, you know, function normally now. In yes. short, you're in a crisis. Yes. And speaking of crisis, let's talk about, shortly, let's talk about debt uh, mm. for SMEs as well, yeah. or generally. Uh, I understand that somebody told me there's good debt and there's bad debt. How good or bad is the debt from a, a banker's perspective? That is usually good for finance classes. So right. uh, it, it said a good debt is where you borrow for an asset that mm -hmm. will one escalate in value and two will give you a revenue. Right. So if I'm if I'm borrowing money to put up uh, rental buildings, mm -hmm. that is good debt. Right. Because I'll earn money from the rentals, and I will be able to probably make a return from there. Right. Bad debt is borrowing money to go and put up a house in Ushago. Mm. So you have a 10 million property in the village mm -hmm. that you only got to use that house once mm. in a year over Christmas. Mm -hmm. So that's how I want to equate good debt and bad debt. So right. good debt is you taking money, put up a rental building and be able to, to make money out of it. Bad debt is you borrowing money to go and put up a big house in the village that you only use once in a year. <laughs> That's a good example. Mm -hmm. Also now debt crisis. Uh, at what point do you tell this business owner, I'm a, this client who is in a bank setup, that you are having a debt crisis problem and you need help? There are two indicators for having a debt crisis. Mm -hmm. So the first one is when the business starts issuing checks that are not honored. Mm. So a business and cast, is in a bounce. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you're issuing a check for 10,000 shillings, but you have, don't have 10,000 shillings in the account. Mm -hmm. And the habit is recurrent. So mm -hmm. that's a red, uh, red flag. And mm -hmm. the other one is when you're behind your installment, but even one day. Just a day? Yes, it's a trigger. Oh my goodness. Yeah. If you're just behind the installment by one day, I ask myself, why is Collins behind schedule by this one day? Right. Yeah. So that's... That's, that's a trigger that you need to, to go back and check. Right. Yeah. I wish we would have had more time to talk about internal debt, external debt, and how our country is now on the But I think we are solving, right? Do you feel like we are solving our external debt? Uh, uh, I understand they're going to read the budget on 15th. Uh, this is actually after next week, uh, next week, yes, mm. by CS Treasury, that is Professor Anju Gunandungu. Mm. Do you think we are, we are paying it, Kidogo? <laughs> <laughs> Being from the bank, I want to avoid that question. <laughs> I know, I, I, I know. <laughs> but hey, I think we need to do something. But then uh, mm. somebody was saying maybe perhaps this finance bill is also geared to us. But anyways, mm. not a conversation for now. <laughs> yeah. Right now, as we wind up, I'd also love you to, to, to tell uh, uh, people that have aspirations of venturing into small uh, businesses and mm. SMEs as well, uh, how can they get empowered if they actually want to reach out to you uh, mm. How can they go about it? And also, you know, also if they, you have an email, if you have a number that they can seek help so that, you know, mm. they get to get ahead in life. So, okay. uh, this is your camera. And then later on, you tell us if true people who work at the bank always have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I think uh, I look at it from Sandvik Bank. So we've, we've chosen to be the supply chain uh, bank 
for for SME customers. Right. And we know we can be able to to provide that solution. So if you want to reach us on phone, I think the best is the easiest way to get us is send send an SMS SME to triple two zero eight. I repeat, send an SMS to us. We start with the word SME to triple two zero eight. Somebody will certainly call you back to get give you more information. Right. If you also then want to drop us an email, send us an email to SME Connect. I repeat the words SME Connect as one word at stanbic.com. Right. So with that information, we'll be able to reach out to you to provide support. And remember that said, we are able to give you up to 5 million shillings on unsecured basis based on your business uh, records. Right. Thanks Do for banks that. have money? <laughs> yes. Not banks. Do people who work at the bank, like banks like you are, <laughs> do you always have money? Because I, I know you have relatives like, hey, bro, to gonna, to gonna to 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 stand back. I'm going to have to pay 10,000 size. Eh, eh, so you have to pay hata, you know? You know, for, for us, money is stock. Money is stationary. A money is stationary. Money is stationary. It does not like, move. It's like your normal paper. All right. Yeah, it's, okay. not, it's not money. It is stock. It is stationary. So uh -huh. when you look at somebody running a bakery, bread uh -huh. is stock. Eh? Right. Even for me, money is stock. Right. Yeah. Wow. But do you get those calls? They're like, hey, so no fanya kobang, bono to me ten k daily. <laughs> yeah. Do they get annoying? You're like, bro, it doesn't mean that you know I always have money wired to me daily. <laughs> That's true. It gets it annoying, right? Yeah. Mm. Oh my goodness. How do you handle it? <laughs> I think it's just to let people know that you're not able to meet their financial expectation. Yeah. Boundaries. That time. Yeah. You exactly. Just tell them, sorry, this is not something I'd like to to ex enter discussions around money. Because mm. even my employer does not allow me. To give money to you ah. it's my internal it's actually an internal regulation wow i'm not allowed to enter into exchange of money mm -hmm. yeah right mm -hmm. that's sad <laughs> I had a lot of expectations, but thank you so much. I think we are right on time. We have been speaking to uh, Collins Onyonyi, who is head of enterprise banking at Stanbic Bank, uh, sharing with us uh, deeper insights on how to go about with SME banking or SME financing. Right there. Thank you so much, Collins. Thank We'd you. love to have you once again. More I'm available. Time, you know. Yeah. Right. I'm a phone call away. Right. We'll do that. Thank you so much. And on this note, we are ending it. Uh, continue to interact with us on hashtag Y in the morning at Y244 channel at Brian Sakoano 1. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic Tuesday. See you next time.